What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Jelly Goon TV. I'm so sorry for the background noise, but I have my fan on because it's currently a heat wave in Denmark. We have so hot. It's so hot. So I have to leave my fan on. I am so sorry for that. I'm sorry if it disturbs you. But um, today we're gonna react to what is happening on Death Iceland in Thailand. Now, I'm gonna go to Thailand in November. So it's really interesting for me to see because I never heard about this Iceland uh, island. Never heard about it whatsoever. But it sounds like a horrible place when it's called Death Island. It's really, really horrible. I hope it's not a beautiful place because if it is, I wanna go there. But I don't wanna go there if it's Death Island. So we're gonna react to this. I hope you're gonna enjoy this reaction. It's 33 minutes long, the video. So we're gonna see what's going on, of course. But um, yeah. Anyway, let's get right on it. Let's go. This is the island of Koh Tao. Okay. If you've ever oh, wow. expressed any desire for a tropical holiday, the chances are you've already heard of this island. With platinum oh. sands, luscious palm trees, and vibrant blue waters, Koh Tao is arguably one of the most idyllic islands yeah. on the planet. So the problem why I'm watching this video is because me and my wife, I'm going to Thailand in November. Me and my wife, we talked about which Iceland's we want to go to and what's going on there, how beautiful it is and all of that. So this video is definitely for me and my wife, 100%. Because I don't want to go to this island if I'm going to die. I don't want to die on my vacation, man. Sheesh. But following along and grisly streak of disappearances and mysterious deaths, it is quickly becoming better known as Death Island. Oh, come on, man. So, nah. what exactly happened here? And why the morbid name? Yeah, exactly. That's what I want to know. My name is Adrian, and welcome back to another video Hello, of Coffee House Crime. Today, we're deep diving into the history of Koh Tao, and why you may want to scratch this island off your bucket list. Okay. Just a quick I'm heads up, but I post solved, unsolved, and strange cases here on a weekly basis. So, if that sounds like a kind of thing, please consider subscribing to Coffee House Crime. So pull up a seat, grab a coffee, and sit back, my friend. This is back. the case of Death Island. Okay, Death Island. This is like a statement, man. That's horrible. Welcome to the land of smiles, Thailand. Yes. Historically known as Siam, Thailand is a vibrant country found in the heart of Southeast Asia. And with a population of almost 70 million people, it's a large nation with an even larger audience. I say larger, as Thailand is one of the most tourist-busy countries on the planet. Mm, I could Numbers have grown that. from roughly 335,000 foreign visitors in 1967 to 32.5 million tourists in the year 2016. Damn, that's a lot of money right there. So, what's the hype all about? It is obvious to see why Thailand is popular amongst holiday makers. I mean, just look at some of these views. It's if gorgeous. majestic temples and hustling markets aren't your thing, then maybe it's modern cityscapes are, which rise up from the country's mountainous terrain. If that doesn't pique your interest, we're only getting started. Tropical jungles and forests rip through the plains of Thailand, with both old and new secrets hidden Indeed. within. Indeed, yeah. And where the land meets the water, cliffs rise like monoliths from the ocean. Scoping out from the country's daring terrain, a warm and tropical environment is found. And zooming in, an exuberant culture with delicious food is just waiting to be realized. So if you haven't went to Thailand yet, I really do encourage you to go because it's a beautiful country. There's so much going on and there's so many things that you can see, you can relax from work. You could do a lot of things, man. It's just really gorgeous and it's one of the destinations that I love to death. I love Thailand so much. It is a beautiful thing and they have so much food. They have so many adventures you could go on. It's just really amazing, man. And that's the reason why I keep coming back. With some of those dishes, only the most daring would try. I tried this. But maybe yeah. we're getting ahead of ourselves here. I eat scarbia As today, now. we're focusing on the second smallest island of the Champagne Archipelago. And that island is named Koh Tao. Koh Tao. Koh Tao is known for its tropical coral reefs, incredible beaches, gorgeous weather, and undefeatable diving spots. You may have also heard Koh Tao to be named as Turtle Island. In its more modern times, it has become somewhat of a party island for Western tourists. And at certain times of the year, you will also find green turtles here for the exact same reason. Nice. If you understand what I mean. With warm sands beneath your feet and a vibrant yet laid back lifestyle to lose yourself in, it's no surprise why Koh Tao is considered as paradise to many. 
I'd like to say that Koh Tao is peaceful, but being only 8 square miles and attracting a lot of visitors to the island, it can get very busy. Nevertheless, Koh Tao finds itself as a prominent selling point to the Great Thai Experience, and over 300,000 tourists find themselves here every year. So maybe that's why, on New Year's Day of 2014, people on the island were rather shocked to discover the body of a tourist. What? Nick Pearson, creepy. a 25-year-old man from Derbyshire, England, was found dead at the bottom of a 50-foot drop in one of the island's bays. Nick was on a holiday with his family over the Christmas period, when they found themselves on the island over New Year's Eve. And although they were from England, Nick loved Thailand. In fact, this was his seventh visit. Wow. But his death seemed to happen over mysterious circumstances. Aw, oh, come on, man. Nah. On the night before his death, after enjoying dinner with his family, they headed out for cocktails at Chopper's Bar and Grill. And after a drink or two, they made their way to Sari Beach for the New Year's countdown and fireworks. At around 1am, the family decided it was time to get some rest, so they slowly made their way back to their bungalows nearby. Nick had his own bungalow, and after seeing him get in bed, his father Graham wished him goodnight before making his way back to his own. Graham and Tracy woke up the following morning to no sign or message from Nick. What? And after checking his bungalow, they- That is really creepy because people, they can go into your bunker, they can do a lot of things, you know, something can happen. I don't know what this guy's into, I don't know what he did, or maybe he took some drugs or something. I'm not disrespecting him like that. I'm just saying, man, it's kind of weird that you lay in your bunker and then, but maybe the guy went on. Um, So you can get drunk and you can all that stuff. And maybe when you go sleep, it's not it because you feel like restless. You feel like you want to do more. You feel like the night is not over. So this guy probably just wandered off in the night, um, trying to spend New Year's Eve, whatever he could, and, you know, being a little bit dramatic and a little bit romantic, whatever he wanted to do, right? So he went out in the woods, probably, and he fell down somewhere, and that's it. I, I don't know, but yeah. I could imagine that's the reason why he died. Who knows, really, but I could imagine that. 100%. He realized no one was home. Silence persisted throughout the morning, until, in the early afternoon, hotel staff had some rather heavy news to share. Nick had been found, and, unfortunately... He was dead. It was a terrible tragedy, but officers were very quick to close Nick's case. Since he had fallen into a bay, they automatically assumed he had fallen in and drowned. However, after identifying his body at the local temple, Nick's parents started to realize that things weren't quite adding up. They noticed a large gash on his head, an injury that didn't amount to a 50-foot fall. Mm. And despite being told that drowning was the cause of his death, blood had dried across his face. Nick wasn't the type of person to randomly go swimming on his own accord, oh, and really? he was already okay. tired and in bed when his parents left him. So none of this made sense. Mm. There was also no attempt made by officers to investigate the scene or his bungalow. So, Thai police are very, very lazy when it comes to investigation of things. That's why you should never count on them. It's a beautiful city. It's a beautiful country. But the police are very bad because they're very corrupt and they are very... They just don't care. Like, they want to make the easiest day possible. And that's what I really dislike about Thailand. Of course, there's some good officers down there that does the job. Of course, it's not everybody. But you get this feeling when you see the cops that they are very lazy and they take against money and you know all this stuff. Like, it's really, really corrupted country. But it's so beautiful. It is really gorgeous. But yeah, the Thai cops, they are lazy to investigate things because they, they, they don't watch CSI. I don't know. I Needless don't know what to, to say, say, Nick's parents were devastated, but they were hopeless to the situation. Mm. In fact, after his death, locals warned them to keep quiet, as the island had powerful people behind the scenes. What? His parents noticed that before his death, Nick had started flirting with a local Thai girl that he had recently met. They began to wonder if perhaps this flirting so the problem with Thailand and you know as Las Vegas and America and all that stuff yes there is some really bad people behind everything there's a lot of money in this and when there is a lot of money they attract the wrong crowd so yeah there is a lot of powerful people behind this but if you come as a tourist you're not gonna pay attention to that that's the reason why I don't want people to to see Thailand as this criminal organization with the mafia and everything like that but of course there are some things that goes on when there are a lot of money but you have to pay respect to the people you have to be respectful trust me it's gorgeous there it is beautiful to be there but of course there's something behind the scenes man 100 percent. but again man i feel sorry for this family i really do it caused some sort of offense mm. and in response someone followed him home 
Nick was repatriated back to England the following week, where post-mortem reports suggested that he could have been attacked before his death, mm. but murderous intent could not be confirmed. Reports also highlighted that Nick had no broken bones, which was very strange considering he had fallen 50 feet. Yeah, that's true. Surely that is if true. the gash on his head was from a fall, then broken bones would also be observed. Either way, no further analysis or investigations would be made. That's and horrible. And from here on out, the story of Nick Pearson would end. So, listen guys and girls, when you go to Thailand, now I have to make this fucking clear, 100% clear. When you go to Thailand, I know there's a lot of girls, I know you are a foreigner, they want you, they want your money, you feel like a king when you're down there. But please, be fucking careful what you do down there. Be careful with the girls, because yes, the girls are cute, the girls are sweet, but treat them good. If you don't want the girl and you think she's rude, just walk away. Just go away. Do whatever you can to be nice and say it in a polite way. Because Thai people are known to stay together and they will to beat your ass if they feel like you are mistreating a Thai. And it's really something they do, like not of a brotherhood, but more of like we are Thais, why a foreigner comes here and you know this. But just pay respect to the woman. Don't be aggressive. And especially tourists from England. I want to say this really fucking clearly. You guys from England are fucking... You are stupid people who don't know how to interact with people, who don't know how to act when you're at a bar or you're trying to do your thing, drink or whatever. You are violent, you're jumping up and down, you're doing all these crazy stuff. You know, you're doing all this crazy shit. Not to say that this guy did it, but I'm just saying to the basic, because I saw a lot of English English tourists, and I don't like English tourists. I'm sorry to say it, man. They, they vulgar, they scream, they drink, you know. Trying to play tough, trying to do all this uh, stupid stuff, man. I saw it firsthand. I saw it firsthand. But these guys got to watch out because they're in another country. They're not in England. And there's different people behind that because there's a lot of money and they don't want any unwanted attention. So please watch out when you're down there. Just relax. Use your six, uh, six sense and just be yourself. Relax. Calm down. Be on vacation. Don't think about the corruption. Don't think about the police. Don't think about the mafia, the gangs who run the shit. Of course, there's gangs who run the shit. Uh, bro, it's money. That's how it is. Don't think about it. Just enjoy yourself. But this guy is very... It's, it's sad. It's really sad because maybe something happened to him, but we can't really know because the police won't do anything. So yeah, but anyway, let's get into it. I just wanted to say it and make it clear. If you're a tourist, please respect the country and please don't get you into self trouble because a lot of trouble you can get out of if you could talk right, you know? So yeah. This wasn't the first time that Kotal had experienced a mysterious death, as unfortunately, it's somewhat part of our nature. And even in paradise, both death and murder, and the fog in between, is incessant. Yeah, true. Excuse it's the philosophical everywhere. rhetoric, but hear me out. On a timeline relative to the rest of the world, Kotal has barely been around. Formerly a prison in 1943, the island remained completely uninhabited before this. And after its decommission in 1944, Kotel was once again vacant, until its first pioneers arrived from Koh Samui in 1947. Wow. And three decades later, in 1977, the island would see its first travellers, with its first resort being erected in 1984. Initial reports of murder and mysterious deaths on Kotel date back to the early 90s. But it wasn't until the age of the internet that that information started to amalgamate towards the wider audience. It is impossible to speak for any cases prior to 2012, as there simply isn't enough information past hearsay. But in August of that year, British IT manager Ben Harrington had also met the end of his life. It was in the early hours of the 30th of August What's with the British tourist, man? that Ben's body was found among the wreckage of his moped and a pylon. Although Thai officers ruled that Ben had died from a broken neck, an autopsy back in England would reveal that it was in fact a transacted aorta. Granted, this can also be indicative of a vehicle collision, but it also leaves room for many more possibilities. The most concerning detail to Ben's case was that his wallet, money and watch were never recovered from the scene, therefore suggesting that he may have been mugged. But did that happen as a reaction to his death? Or was it the cause of his death? And of course, moving two years forward to the year 2014, Nick Pearson would be the next person to mysteriously perish. Although 17 months separated Nick's from Ben's case, the next few occurrences would happen much quicker. 
And disturbingly, some of these cases painted a much more malicious picture. In September of 2014, Koh Tao's most notorious murders would take place, thus thwarting the island into the international spotlight. What? And really? of course, I'm talking about the murders of Hannah Witheridge and David Miller. Who the fuck is that? Already covering their case here on Coffee House Crime, I won't go into too much detail. But just eight months after Nick's death, Hannah and David would tragically be found dead on the beach. Both There's somebody out there, a serial killer, who's killing people. I promise you, man, this is not even a coincidence anymore, man. There's a serial killer out there who's killing the people, man. That's messed just up. Finished their degrees, the That's two messed arrived up, on man. That's with messed their own up. Groups of friends. But That's after selecting Ocean View Resort for their accommodation, the two eventually crossed paths. At around 7 p.m. of the 14th of September, a surveillance camera captured Hannah walking with her friends into Chopper's bar. And shortly after that, at 7.47, David, along with a friend of his, joined them. The now larger group shared drinks with one another before taking this picture. And just after midnight, Hannah was seen walking towards AC Bar with her friends. They were only 200 meters from their hotel. Shortly after that, at 1 a.m., David also left Chopper's bar to catch up with the ladies. Friends reported that both Hannah and David called it a night at around 2 a.m. They said their goodbyes before heading back towards Ocean View Resort together. However, they would never make it back alive. Oh, their bodies no. were found the following morning, just meters away from their resort. David was found in the water. He had received multiple head wounds before drowning. Hannah's body was also found nearby against the rocks. She had similar fatal injuries, was semi-naked, and you can probably guess why. The deaths of Hannah Witheridge and David Miller brought an unprecedented amount of publicity to the island, and for several reasons too. For one, it was quite obvious that their deaths were not self-inflicted or an accident. Mm. Police knew from the very beginning that they were dealing with a double homicide, yeah. which is probably what makes the next issue all the more frustrating, as police failed to secure the crime scene. They even failed to stop people taking pictures of their bodies. Here's just a few mistakes. So Thai police is not really known for CSI expertise or professionality because it's just normal Thai people who's cops. Like, it's really sad to see this shit is going on and I don't understand why people would do this. Make money and stop that murdering shit. Like, seriously. But I think it's something there's wrong here. Like, there's some serial killer or something, man. But the crime it scene was trampled on by tourists horrible. and locals. Pictures were taken of Hannah and David and no DNA samples were collected until six hours after their initial discovery. And even after the area was secured, non-authorized citizens were still spotted behind the police tape. Jesus Christ, Including brother. this guy. We'll get back to him later. But the problem is, all right, so there's, how do I explain this? In my city, for example, there's 7,000 people. Everybody almost know everybody and, you know, all this kind of thing, right? So this Iceland right here, they know the cops that is on the Iceland because it's Iceland. There's not a lot of people. So everybody walks around. They do their stuff. You know, they do their thing. They talk to the cops. They talk to the civilians. The civilians are part of the cops, but it doesn't make it right. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm just explaining how small communities, they work. Small communities, they work the way that everybody is communicating with everybody and everybody really is not a professional as a USA or America where there's 230 million people like it's just the Iceland man they do whatever they want to do and all this stuff but I just think it's very disrespectful disrespectful from the Thai police to do this I think it's it's unbelievable man unbelievable before we carry on some additional context to the island of Koh Tao is required as things begin to escalate pretty fast from here Although we think of tourists when we hear the word holiday, we never really stop to think of those that accommodate them. Mm. Welcoming over 300,000 holidaymakers every year requires a lot of work. The island has a permanent population of around 1,500 people. Mm. And although there are Thai residents See? on the island, most of them who aim to serve its tourists are actually from Myanmar, also known as Burma. None of these Burmese workers so residing Thai. on Koh Tao actually own any of the businesses on the island. And in fact, some of them don't even have the legal documentation to work here. But by default, all businesses on the island must hold majority ownership by a Thai citizen. And in many of these cases, that equates to 51%. But who exactly owns the other 49% of these businesses? For a lot of them, the short answer 
is the owner of the land underneath it, which most of the time is the Tewitchian family. It is reported that the Tewitchians are an extremely wealthy family that have lived on Koh Tao for most of its inhabited life. And having a stakehold in many of these businesses, they maintain relatively strong control of their operations, profit, and to a certain degree, rules. With as little as three police officers stationed on the island at any one time, it is arguable that Koh Tao is often left to its own devices. And with the Tuichin family being the most influential entity on the island, it is also arguable that perhaps this influence may encroach socially accepted normals. For example, even in crime scenes such as the murder of Hannah and David, Montreuat Tuichin was permitted to stand behind police tape in a zone that he should have no influence or control over. And, coincidentally, he owned AC Bar, the very bar that Hannah and David had visited that night. Jesus Christ, brother. That's messed up, man. Rumours of the so-called Kotal Mafia have been around for quite some time. But following Hannah's and David's death, allegations of them being involved spiralled in the following days. Very soon after, a surveillance image of what appeared to be Montreuat out during the time of their murders started to circulate. And in response, Montreuat fled from the island before going into hiding. Really? Since mm. police had no idea who the killers were, tensions started to escalate over the following days. And reports of marks, cuts, burns and bruises appearing on Burmese migrants started to appear, as what? did several allegations of torture. But on the 2nd of October 2014, 16 days after the death of Hannah and David, progress had apparently finally been made. Nice. Police That's obtained good. surveillance footage of three men on a scooter near the crime scene and they were eventually identified as Mong Mong, Saw so Lin, and Wei Pio. After being arrested on suspicion of murder, it would only take 24 hours for Saw so Lin and Wei Pio to confess to these evil crimes. These kids? And authorities would make a- These fucking kids? What? You see what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm talking about, man. That's- Man, I wish you burning hell. Spectacle of this. Publicly broadcasting a reconstruction of the murders with Saw so and Wei. However, five days later, the two would officially retract their confessions after claiming that they'd been tortured into submission. <laughs> Evidence oh, okay. also suggested that the two could have been framed, as DNA analysis confirmed that the weapon used to kill David and Hannah did not match the DNA of Zorlin or Wei Pio. And even to this day, the DNA profile hasn't been linked to anyone. It was also pointed out in trial <laughs> that police had failed to secure the crime scene, failed to use an accredited forensics doctor, and failed to test DNA found on the yeah. rocks and on Hannah's clothes. Because it's Iceland. Regardless, on Christmas Eve of 2014, Zor Lin and Wei Pio were officially found guilty over the murders of Hannah Witheridge and David Miller, and as a result, they were sentenced to death. Thai officials received a substantial amount of backlash following this decision, and this backlash even came from Hannah Witheridge's sister, and even Anonymous who declared war against the Thai government for favouring tourism over people's safety. It was already well known that the Thai government and its police services had been corrupt for a long time. Yeah. But this really heightened awareness. Regardless, authorities were hoping that now they had two people guilty and behind bars, tourists would start to see the island as safe again mm. and would start revisiting Koh Tao. However, exactly one week after their guilty verdict, another tragedy hit the island. What? In the How's early that? hours of New Year's Day 2015, the body of a French national named Dimitri Povs was found suspended from the ceiling of his beach bungalow. Dimitri's friends claimed that they had gone out with him for New Year's drinks what? the night prior. What's going on in this Iceland, man? Accommodation and leaving Dimitri alone. The cause of death was asphyxiation, and police concluded that he had taken his own life as a written letter was left behind, detailing his love for a local woman named Iris. Oh. However, friends and family were very skeptical of the idea that he had taken his own life as in general, Dimitri was a very happy person and never expressed any self-destructive thoughts. Oh, there's long way And the now. most concerning aspect to this case is that Dimitri was found with his wrists bound behind his back. Yeah, how could you It did, do however, that? seem possible that he could have done this by himself how? as the rope was loose enough to slide a second hand in. And oh, later, really? that very same month, some more terrible news. On the 21st of January, 2015, Christina Ainsley, a 23-year-old writer from England, was found dead in her room at the In Touch resort. According to Thai police, there were no signs of a struggle or assault. They concluded that she had died of natural causes. What? After mixing antibiotics. 23 years old, antibiotics. 
Man, get the hell out of here, man. Yo, 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 nah, 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 nah. This is some crazy stuff right here that goes on this island. I will not support this island whatsoever, man. That's horrible, brother. God damn. Poor people, man. Why are you killing tourists, man? Antibiotics for a chest infection with alcohol. However, despite these claims, no toxicology report was ever conducted to confirm this. Considering penicillin, a typical antibiotic used for chest infections, has a fatality rate of about 0.002%, the likelihood of Christina dying from this is extremely small. Mm. Small enough to argue that a toxicology and autopsy report is absolutely essential. Thai police also refused to interview the last person to have seen Christina, who was really? later identified on CCTV. And even further, they refused to release this surveillance footage. An officer also added that the bungalow she was found dead in was owned by Montreat Tawichian, the very same man who managed the bar where David and Hannah were on their final night. Because Christina's body had been held for so long before being released to UK authorities, no post-mortem or blood sampling was possible by the time that she had been repatriated. And so, another- So I think this is a very strong family that is, uh, you know, killing tourists just for fun. I don't know what's going on. I don't know the situation, of course. I'm not going to wage into it. It's not my problem. But I still think it's sad for these guys and girls just to be killed on their vacation, man. I don't know the situation, of course, but respect to the families, man. That's horrible, man. I don't even understand why you would do that to tourists when you're making money of them. That's bad for business. That's what I don't get about this, because it's bad for business. You understand what I'm saying? The mafia in America, murder is bad for business, especially if you're murdering the people who make you money. Definitely, if you're murdering, it's just not business, 100%. So I don't understand what's going on there, man. Another it's, mysterious it's, it's, it's death weird. on the hotel. And I think he has some kind of fetish. Swept under the rug by Thai police. Only four weeks later, another case opened up. On the 16th of February 2015, 23-year-old Russian tourist Valentina Novozhinova disappeared from a hostel on Koh Tao. Man, God damn. She had checked in just a few days prior, but after not being seen by anyone for several days, the hostel owner had become concerned. Entering her room, staff found her mobile phone, passport, money, and camera. But Valentina herself was nowhere to be found. All of her belongings had been left behind, which made no sense if she was planning to leave. Surveillance cameras held no clues. Those that were operating found no trace of her. The others were suspiciously not working. <laughs> and even to this day, no one knows what happened to Valentina. It's unbelievable you can get away with this. It's In a brief period of only five months, Kotao had become the center stage to an additional five deaths and disappearances. And none of them could rule out foul play. And although these deaths and disappearances are tragic, none of them seemed to initially connect to one another. With an island accommodating roughly 300,000 tourists every year, there is bound to be some level of death and even murder in those average statistics. But scratching past the surface, a few chilling patterns begin to emerge. If you remember David's and Hannah's deaths, That's I mentioned so that David arrived with several friends, and one of those friends was Sean McKenna. Following the murder of David and Hannah, Sean continued to remain on the island. Arriving at a bar the following what? night, he shared his pain and frustration with one of the workers. It was during this conversation that the bar owner and three of his men sat down around Sean. And, well, this is what was said. I went to a bar um, where a guy started asking me questions because he knew that I knew uh, the, the guy who died. Three of them sat me down and started asking me questions. Uh, and I was a bit drunk, so I was answering them. They just said to me, um, you're going you're gonna to hang yourself tonight. You're going to hang yourself tonight. Uh, we're going to watch you hang. But you, uh, you died tonight, so I, I just ran. I just left and ran. What the fuck is wrong with these people, man? Sean desperately posted to Facebook to say, Thai Mafia are trying to kill me. Please help me. He took pictures of the men uploaded those photos to Facebook, and ran. Although the men instructed Sean to end his life, they were very particular in the way they wanted it done. In fact, it was the exact same way Dimitri had passed away. Yo, that's some crazy shit right there. Look, that's the most amateur mafia ever in the whole entire fucking world. Listen up, motherfuckers. If you don't know business one-on-one, -on -one, murder is bad for your goddamn reputation. It's got Man, God, how stupid can you be? How dumb can you be? 
That's what I don't get about these organized crimes anymore, man. It's not what it used to be. They are so dumb. They are so stupid. They put unwanted attention on people that, you know, I don't know if it, they played too safe or whatever, but it's just dumb. It is the stupidest business plan you can ever have in your entire life, man. Man, god damn, that's stupid. That is dumb. Man, that's dumb. That is stupid. A circumstance that could appear as self-inflicted. And one of these men at the bar man. was Montrawat Stwichian. Sean sprinted into the jungle, taking refuge under its foliage for the night. And the very next morning, he fled from the island. Local cops confirmed that two men were questioned about these death threats. But after a brief discussion, no further action was taken. And these details aren't the only similarities to Hannah's and David's case. As years later, Sam Venning and his friend Carla Bartel would eventually come forward to reveal that they were attacked one year before Hannah's and David's death in the exact same spot. Interviewed by Australian lawyer Ian Yarwood, Sam recalled how one night in 2013, he and Carla were sat on a rock at the south end of Sari Beach. It was pitch black, and nothing was visible. Sam recalled how one night in 2013, he and Carla were sat on a rock at the south end of Sari Beach. It was pitch black, and no one was around. Sam recalled hearing a moped pull up behind him, but in the split second he turned around, he was hit in the head with a rock. The rock breaking as he fell to the beach below. Carla screamed as loud as she could, and following her screams, it seemed to startle the attackers as they ran away. And needless to say, Man. both Carla and Sam did the exact same thing. I don't Sam left the this. island as soon as he could, but even during that time, his Thai local friends told him not to bother telling the police of the event, as this would fall on deaf ears or even make the situation worse. Yeah, true, true, true. true One true. more piece of concerning information that I forgot to include. But even after the deaths of David and Hannah, Thai police were not interested to hear of Sam's or Carla's stories. Of course not. Following a spree of mysterious deaths throughout early 2015, the island would settle down for a short period of time. But in April of 2017, the island would once again claim another life. I just don't understand why tourists, they are... This pisses me off. Why would you not search the Iceland that you were going to? I have not seen this Iceland. I didn't show it up. I showed other Icelands where I read about what's going on there and how it is and everything like that. But of course, they're going to leave out the details. But goddamn, I'm going to search it next time. Does anything happen here? Are there any serial killers, murders, anything here? Please tell me, Google. God damn it. This is just horrible, man. Why would people keep coming back when they know there's murders? I don't understand that. That's what I don't get. Elise Alamagna was a backpacker from Belgium. She was 30 years old at the time, and had Why are these people going to this? around Asia. Why? On the 19th of April 2017, Elise booked herself into Triple B Bungalows, which is located south of Sari Beach. Yet, very bizarrely, three of their bamboo huts, which also included Elise's accommodation, would burn down that very night. She instead found herself checking into Poseidon Resort, she booked a ticket to leave the island four days later on the 24th of April. As the 24th rolled around, her bags would make it onto the boat. In fact, they would make the entire journey all the way back to the mainland. But Elise was nowhere to be found. That was until a few days later. Her body was eventually found hanging among the rocks behind her resort, deep in the jungle of Koh Tao. She was found wrapped in old t-shirts and an empty fuel bottle was found next to her. Given the state of decomposition, Elise had passed away about- Why are you acting like this like a criminal? I don't understand what the fuck this is. It makes no sense. It's not brutal. It's not- It's just stupid. It is dumb. Like seriously, it is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life, man. How can you be this dumb? Three days And early, tourists are still stupid. They to go the day there. that she should have left the island. She had to be identified using dental records and x God damn. And unfortunately, she was cremated before her family had the chance to repatriate her. The list of victims who have perished on the island of Koh Tao is almost too expansive to cover. Yeah. But Bernd Grotsch was a German man who moved to Koh Tao in 1998. He set up his own business on the island, but left in 2016, after becoming frustrated with the island's corruption and hostility towards foreign business owners. He would later return to Koh Tao in March of 2018 to tie up a few loose ends. But instead of leaving the island for good, he was found dead in his home. Bernd was both fit and healthy for his age. So when police reported that the cause of his death was heart failure, friends and family were <laughs> yeah, skeptical. These cops, <laughs> these cops are crazy as fuck, man. 
These cops are crazy as fuck, man. They were to do everything they can just to provide it as a natural cause. That's not a natural cause, man. They don't want foreigners there. They don't want foreigners there. I don't understand why you would keep visiting that goddamn I man. They would never find out what killed him. It pisses him me off people can get away with this stuff. was never handed over to his family. It was noted that he had recently separated from his wife, who was actually a native to the island. So there was speculation that maybe this was a motive to his death. Still, no one knows. There are many more cases that I could talk about, but I thought I'd finish with Kotal's most recent deaths, which happened only last year. On the 4th of June 2021, Rakeshwa Sakatamakul, his wife Anshu, and son Ratish had boarded a boat to Kotal. Rakeshwa was no ordinary person. He was actually a multimillionaire, building his wealth on an empire of hotels. Rakeshwa was in fact another hotelier. After arriving on the island, they found that their pre-booked accommodation was too small, and the hotel itself was still under construction. So, following a short disagreement with the staff, the family boarded a taxi to a different hotel. Settling into a luxurious resort, Rakeshwa and Anshu took a moment to share a beer, but Ratish wanted to check out the local beach. So, after hiring a kayak, he left his parents behind while he took a walk. My God, damn. Nothing seemed amiss when Ratish left. Their hotel plans may have changed, but otherwise the family were happy to spend some time together. But that would all change after his return, as once he made it back to the resort, he found both of his parents dead in the swimming pool. Police would eventually rule drowning as the cause of their deaths, <laughs> Man, God damn. which would be a rarity for one person, but two makes it even Jesus less likely. Christ, brother. And unfortunately, their autopsy report is yet to be released, despite this happening almost eight months ago. Surveillance cameras overlooking the pool were also supposedly not working on the day of their deaths, so it's still not clear what exactly happened to Rakeshwa or Anshu, but they may very well be the most recent names added to a long list of victims with a fate that will never be fully understood. Man, that is... I'm pissed. I don't understand why so you would kill people like that, man. So, what's my synopsis on Koh Tao? Is it an island that you should consider visiting? Or is it one to avoid entirely? Here are the facts. There have now been several deaths on the island, all of which are shrouded in mystery, and if you dig even deeper, you will find several more. It is also obvious to see that these deaths and events are not all coincidental, but when you factor in the number of tourists visiting the island, a comparison of 20 odd deaths versus 2.4 million tourists, it is tremendously likely that your visit to Koh Tao will remain safe. But let's not pretend that these murders did not happen. Yeah, exactly. And whether big or small, there is no doubt that corruption is happening yeah. here. Yeah, exactly. Police corruption is rife throughout the entire country of Thailand, not just the island. In fact, according to a study by Transparency International, which was published in November of 2020, nearly half of all Thais interviewed admitted that they had to pay bribes to the police in the previous 12 months alone. The close relationship between business and government has resulted in a widespread use of bribes in most sectors across the country, and bribery and conflicts of interest are most common within Thailand's private and public sectors. Koh Tao has found itself in a unique situation. Since the island hasn't been inhabited for long, it is still majority owned by one family, the Tuwichians. And with the number of tourists visiting the island, this clearly puts them in a financially dominant position. And up until 2019, the island only had one tiny police station. It is rumoured that only three officers were stationed here. Not that this number necessarily matters, as even the island's locals warn tourists not to bother with reporting crimes. All the same, they warn of corruption. And this corruption, which is suggested to be in the form of financial bribery from the Tuwichians to their local police, is allegedly used to protect the mafia-like family from accused crimes. Yeah, of course. Picking Hannes and David's case, for example, several witnesses reported seeing the two argue with Montrowat in a bar earlier that evening. Montrowat's DNA was never collected or analysed, and despite Thorlin and Waypio initially confessing, they later claimed that they were forced into submission. It is factually correct that the DNA found on the weapon did not match their own, and independent retesting of the DNA was never allowed by Thai officials. So, can we really trust Thai police? No. To put this into perspective from the other side, a high-ranking officer at the corrections department had even once revealed in a TV interview that his belief is half of all prisoners are scapegoats. And although there is no evidence to confirm corruption is present on the island, a bewildering amount of people and information outwardly scream it. 
And bribery is not the only motivating factor to sweep these deaths under the rug either, as Thailand is eager to present itself as a safe place for tourists to visit and travel. Blaming foreigners or migrants instead of accusing their own locals mm. protects Thailand as a destination for holidays and therefore brings more money into the country. Tourism already accounts for over 20% of Thailand's GDP, with ambitious targets to increase this up to 30% by the year 2030. So that is crazy. Yeah, let's end the video right here. I think it's unbelievable that this is allowed to be happening. You know what I mean? Like, I'm really disgusted. And this is why I hate going down on these cases, because I'm really disgusted how the world is screwed together. But this is a picture that you get of the world that it's all about money. It's all about this. But it's when you establish a country with the business side of it. The business side is so strong. They want to be corruption because they want to buy it off. This family is definitely paying the police off to do this. This is definitely murders. I'm not going to say anything more about that. I just think it's very horrific. But Thailand is definitely one of the corrupted countries in the world. But it does not take away that it's so beautiful. It's so amazing. It's just really an amazing country. It really is, man. It's really awesome. I love Thailand to death. Um... It's just really an amazing country, and uh, yeah. But anyway, guys and girls, if you like this video, please hit the like button down below. Also, please do subscribe. Hit the notification button if you really want to, of course. We're trying to get to 20,000 subscribers, so it be massively appreciated if you wanted to, of course. And uh, also, please do comment down below what you think about this video, of course. I'm going to Thailand in November, and it's going to be beautiful. I'm going to be so excited about it. This made me a little bit scared, but again, I know that... It's not going to happen to me because I'm a good guy. I don't do anything. I don't mind my business and other things. I don't yell at type people. Don't do anything because I know how it works. Anyway, guys and girls, love you so much. And I'll see you into the next one. Peace.